Hey, we're starting to get a few people in the room over here already, so I want to welcome everyone who is here and make sure you are wearing your convention badges if you get a chance to uh, put that on so that way that we can see you as well. And also I wanted to uh, mention, I can see the PJ uh, Compagna is here then too. Thank you, PJ, for uh, coming and uh, having a little bit of problem getting a notification, I guess, from YouTube or something. Hey, Clark, here's my buddy right there, Clark Aldridge. Hey, Scott Wells, he says, and hello, Clark. I uh, hope you're doing well. It's good to hear from you. Usually I got John Custer is the first one that's in this room, but uh, surprisingly, he's not the first one. Clark, you're in here for the first first one here tonight. Glad that you're here. Uh, awesome. Glad that you guys are here. Anyhow, a lot of good stuff we're going to be having in the season. Ah, Harriet's there, of course. Harriet Jacobson. Thank you, my love. You are here from Michigan, as I know. So thank you for uh, joining us. we got about 20 seconds to go before we uh, bring on the guests and everything. Well, actually, I'm going to BS a little bit first, but uh, we got uh, a lot of stuff to talk about, kind of getting back here for our 50-second week, and I'm getting excited. We're getting ready now for the 10-second countdown, so I'll back out a little bit. I'm getting excited, and so, yeah, hey, uh, that's right, Clark, you win the prize. Here it goes. It's Thursday night. Thursday night. You know what that, you means. Know what that means. It's time for it's Magic, time and, for Martinis. Magic and Martinis. Martinis. Please welcome your Please host, welcome your host, Scott Will. Hey, 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 here we are. Cheers, everyone, and happy uh, Magic and Martini Thursday virtual happy hour. And you guys uh, probably have your badges. If not, you should. They're uh, easily available. You just need to go over there to uh, the website. And let me just kind of pop that up over here for you so you can kind of see where, where that is. That is right there. So this way you're going to be able to see it. Uh, where am I pointing? The wrong place. Uh, right over there. Uh yeah, that's it. <laughs> Anyhow, you can see the uh, the tinyurl.com M&M &M badge. That is for free. Make sure it's this way that you can get that printed out, and you can wear your own badge uh, then as well over there. That's uh, kind of cool. And that's uh, for free. Who else? Someone else just popped in over here. And so, uh, oh, yeah, Jerry. Jerry uh, Costello is here from uh, Colon, Michigan. Looking forward to uh, seeing you. Thanks a lot for being here. And, uh, in fact, uh, speaking of that, uh, we have some other people like Jerry who have uh, put their pictures. In case you wonder what Jerry looks like, like there he is right there, Gerald Costello, uh, who I sent a badge to him. And there is Don Mike Weiberg, my buddy. And then we've got, uh, let's see who else over there. Uh, yeah, David uh, Harbour and uh, John Kiever was uh, there. And we've got uh, Robin Pierce. There is uh, hers. And then we had Harriet Jacobson. Uh, oh, sorry, we'll get hers. There's, there's Harriet. So, uh, you know, Harriet and Mark Rich wearing their name badges. Welcome to the virtual magic convention. Thanks again for joining us, you guys. Ron Sidnick, Robert Byers, uh, Robin Byers Pierce. Thank you very much. And the most recent one I just got here this last week, then Wayne Taylor. So, um, cheers to him. <laughs> so, thank you very much, uh, Wayne, for uh, wearing your name badge then, too. So, let me take just a quick drink here. Hmm. Ah, that's great. Ah, love that. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, last evening was really a lot of fun. Had an opportunity then to visit with uh, Gay Blackstone for our Mincing Movie Magic Night. And she was talking about a lot of things that some of you probably don't know about. You know, she was a gold digger dancer, worked with the Dean Martin Show, and she was also back in the Howdy Doody Show. She was part of the Peanut Gallery. And she, as a result, she got kicked off by the network because she badmouthed Wonder Bread, apparently. <laughs> Anyhow, she was on another show, I've Got a Secret. You can need to go back and listen to that one. That was kind of fun there yesterday uh, with Gabe Blackstone, which is why I'm wearing then today. You see this official uh, shirt. You see that's my Magic Castle uh, t-shirt uh, that I'm uh, wearing tonight. And I also want to thank the people who are the friends of the Magic Ward. Those are the ones who are the financial sponsors, who are the uh, patrons uh, with your financial uh, pledges each month or your donations from time to time. Really appreciate it, which gives me an opportunity to have this lovely background that we've got then tonight. Something brand new then too. So thank you guys very much for helping to make that thing come, uh, come around. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, there's John. Uh, <laughs> yo from Philly. Okay. Hey, that's, uh, <laughs> one of Danny's buddies, I'm sure that, uh, a Philly man. And so, uh, Clark, yeah, to send you a badge, you have to send me an, uh, an email and I can send you one, uh, with the badge and the lanyard and the whole uh, nine yards over there. Or if you want to just print one out, you can certainly, uh, do that as well. PJ, I'm glad that you are here and hello to you. Glad that you made it. Uh, so we got a lot of uh, stuff to uh, talk about here this evening. And I want to bring, 
uh, in my first guest, speaking of Philly, when John Custer was uh, saying that, I think it's now is a good time for me to bring in our first guest who is from Philly. And I think this little video will tell you something about his theater, because we're in a situation right now where we're starting to take off the mask, starting to get back to the real world, starting to go to some live conventions. And uh, before long, it could be uh, these uh, virtual types of things will be a thing of the past that we'll just kind of fondly remember when we uh, go forward. So uh, as the theater's open, we're going to be talking a lot about that then this evening. So here's one theater that will tell you something about our first uh, guest. There you are, and there he is, Mr. Danny Archer, man of the hour. How are you, man, Danny? Good, Scott. How are you? Good, Scott. How are you? Fantastic. Cheers to you. I'm glad that you're here. What Me do you got? Too, You've got uh, you're drinking with us tonight. Water. Water. Bottle of water. That's great. Here, cheers. I said it doesn't matter. Hmm. And one of the exciting things is, of course, that Danny is broadcasting from his theater. And so we'll get to see a little bit of the theater uh, as he kind of shows the camera around over there. Uh, have you, and we'll talk about virtual shows, which you're going to be doing then uh, at the theater then, too, which was interesting. I forgot to mention at the top of the hour over here that uh, this month's uh, Magic Circular came over from, uh, from the U.K. just today. And the article in the very middle of the uh, thing, if I can open this up over here just a second, this actually was... Uh, circular arguments, uh, and they uh, had myself taking one position and Spiros Molaris taking the other one, in which will, in other words, will uh, virtual shows continue to be a thing into the future after we're out of the quarantine? So I had a uh, lengthy article that was in there in which I was in favor of it, saying, yes, I think they will continue, and Spiros uh, was taking the other side of that. So a little bit uh, uh, different perspectives than from the two of us. So we're we talking about, uh, because we will be getting back into the real world, but also, as Danny's going to talk about, some of the uh, things they're doing as far as uh, virtual shows. But let me bring in the rest of our guests over here who are, uh, who are with us here this evening. Isn't it amazing to watch illusionists perform? And what's great about their magic shows is that they're fun and entertaining for all ages. I've been doing illusions and magic since I was four. So that means a long time. <laughs> and uh, this is kind of the culmination of what we've tried to put together. Um, we worked together for about 12 or 13 years. I was doing magic for about 13 years before I met Joe. So. We've traveled all over the world, done casino showrooms, performing arts centers, television, and basically got tired of uh, doing all that traveling and we wanted to be in control of our own environment and make something happen the way we wanted the magic to happen. So that's why we opened the theater in Dreams. A lot of people ask us why Castle Rock, and we're like, why not? Because people in Castle Rock want entertainment too. And we could choose just about anywhere to live, and we picked here because we love it here. We offer something that only like three places in the entire country have to offer. Uh, we specialize in variety arts. It's like vaudeville, only for the 21st century. You've got magicians, mind readers, illusionists, hypnotists, ventriloquists, circus artists, jugglers, crazy stuff that happens right in front of your eyes. And you're within arm's reach because it's a very intimate place. This is a labor of love. We do this because we believe in the artists that we feature here. We believe in the entertainment value of the art of magic and illusion and things that people just don't have a chance to see live. They see it on TV all the time. They never get a chance to have it hands on. And that's what we love about what we're doing. What a delightful way to entertain friends and family. If you'd like to visit the Theater of Dreams, you can also visit their website at www.amazingshows.com. Yeah, do I look the same? <laughs> you said it, I thought it. 
<laughs> it's we been a long you. 18 months, hasn't it, Joe? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, lack of performing has, like, done this to me. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, uh, it's uh, kind of difficult to have to stay in the way we have this whole time and not being able to uh, do anything. But I know that some of you guys have been – well, first of all, let me go back. Uh, I know that, uh, uh, Danny, that you and Joe had worked together uh, back in – Colorado many years ago in which you were, of course, Danny, you were in charge of lectures. And uh, here Steve Mills, in fact, and said Danny came out to their place in Wichita Falls at a great lecture, which I think, by the way, I think your lecture on Murphy's uh, Magic at the Table was still the best lecture of any of them, uh, even including mine. So it was, I really <laughs> liked yours <laughs> a lot. I appreciate uh, the comments. Thank you. Uh, but uh, you two guys kind of worked together for a while, uh, producing some videos uh, back in the VHS days. Days. Is that right? We did. The uh, the first one we did was Garrett Thomas. But it wasn't VHS. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. No. Was it? It was a videotape. I had the videotape. Okay. It was VHS. You're right, because we did a Danny Archer VHS, too. Right. It was uh, that, that, that was way back in the day. Oh, my God. Right. Garrett Thomas was still chubby back then. So uh, long, <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> uh, what we did is we, we uh, Danny and I decided because he was doing his uh, LVMI Las Vegas Magic Invitational, mm -hmm. and uh, he was finding new talent that people had not heard about. Uh, and so we got together, and he's going, you know, there's some guys out there that really need to be exposed and really be seen. And uh, I've got access to them. You want to work on something. So we uh, formed a company called Five Star Magic Media. And uh, Danny would bring in these no names uh, like Daniel Garcia mm -hmm. <laughs> at the time, you know, and some other ones, Garrett Thomas. Right. And so we would film them at the theater. And back then, yeah, the very first project was a VHS thing. And then we, mm -hmm. you know dealt through the DVD. DVDs, and so those are still uh, on DVD, which is what confused me there. But, you know, Dan yeah. found the talent. We provided the venue and did a bunch of cool stuff, and it, it was a great time. Yeah, it was fun. A lot of fun. And how many years did you guys actually do that? Seven? Yeah, I'd Wow, was it that long? Yeah, about five, yeah. six years, I was thinking, but so long ago, we don't re remember. <laughs> No, that's I'll vouch great. for yeah. it. I'll vouch for it. It was that long. <laughs> yeah. yeah, George Schindler's asking, what is VHS? Yeah. yeah. Ah! <laughs> he should remember. <laughs> um, he remembers celluloid, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, so then anyhow, you also, Danny, were then working, of course, with uh, uh, Dan Fleshman for a while over in Aspen, I guess, uh, with doing the different uh, – uh, uh, restaurants. Was it the same restaurant? You both were working the same place or how was no, that? Uh... Was Vail, not Aspen. It was Vail, okay, Colorado. That's... And I was there for a couple of years and then I helped Dan get in. It was a, a restaurant gig, but it was probably the best restaurant gig in America. It was just, uh, and it wasn't a great place to work. It was noisy. It was crowded, but the cash tips that you would get every day were just incredible. I would take my money, and when it got to be a thousand, I would put rubber bands on it. I threw it in my closet. It was a little town. I'm not a drinker. There, I had no way to spend the money. And one day, I was looking for a magic prop, and I went in my closet, and I saw this money. It was thirty-eight thousand dollars. Holy cow! Oh, geez, man, I made a mistake. I have to weigh in on this. So we it. What? Okay. Yeah. Well, yes. Dan knows uh, this, but he may not remember. But. Uh, I was asked by the owner of that restaurant to come up and do the thing. And that was fairly shortly after we opened the theater. And he wanted three hours a night, six nights a week, I think, maybe seven. Yep. Six, six, and, sometimes and, seven. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I just said, I can't do it because we opened a new theater. We've got, you know, we, I can't do Fridays and Saturdays. And the guy's like, no. Uh, you got to be here on Fridays and Saturdays. So I referred Danny in. Danny may not know this, but I said, you know, he's the guy that <laughs> does the cool close-up stuff. 
So, uh, you know. Thanks, Joe. Well, Danny, Danny went in there and made $38,000. Mm. <laughs> what? Oh, the money's gone. Hey, the, money's the theater. My kid went to college. The money's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Now, Danny, I hope you don't mind if I talk about your apartment for a second. Not at all. Okay, because this is the thing. Uh, I used to do table hopping for years and years and years and behind the bar magic. Well, I went to the place and I said, I want to do magic behind the bar because the guy who owns the restaurant used to frequent the tower where Doc Eason mm-hmm. worked and uh, loved magic. So he wanted it in this very high end chop house. And uh, so he was convinced that magic was a great thing to do. And then um, I got there and I said, you know, we could really do a lot behind the bar and sell more drinks and do all this stuff. And the guy's like, no, no, no. Get the tables and watch the tables. And I'm like, Ugh. somebody's buzzing. That's not me. Sorry, I'm getting a call. Danny? I just, yeah, I just told him I'll call him back. Okay. So I'm doing the, uh, you know, we're doing the tables and I insisted that Carol come up with me because I don't like table hopping or I didn't at that time because I'd done it for so many years. So I'm going, all right, you know, we'll do this together. We'll tag team it and all that stuff. And so Danny uh, was doing one of his conventions, might have been my invention or something. And so he said, I'm going to be gone for a week. You want to cover for me? So I'm like, yeah, we'll do it. So Danny offered his place because that was part of the deal with the restaurant. Well, we walk into Danny's place and there were hippos everywhere hippos and they went from like eraser size from a pencil oh. to giant three foot hippos on the top of the countertops in the kitchen and i'm looking around this is our greeting we're greeted by all these hippos and i'm like this is strange so i ended up calling his wife and i said you know rayetta i'm in hippo heaven <laughs> and she goes that's only half of them mm. well we didn't have anything to do during the day so finally a couple days passed and i said i'm gonna go count how many hippos are in this apartment it's a one bedroom apartment i'm counting all the hippos i think we got up to 180 190 i mean More. hippo soap dish. hippo More. everything Yeah, it was probably more than that. It might have been closer to 300 because I counted like every picture on a calendar, too, or something. I don't know. But anyway, it was great. More than one person should have. I'll I'll say that. (laughs) What's the deal with hippos? What's the obvious obvious question? Uh, Long story short, my grandmother made me in 1978 in ceramic class two different hippos. I don't know why, but and she signed them on the bottom. Grandma, you know, love uh, she was taking a ceramic class, and then I was out somewhere. I saw one. I said, that's a neat one. I bought one. I had three, then four. My brother saw I had a couple. He got me one, and then it expanded. My collection topped out before I started to get rid of a couple at over uh, about 1250 uh, That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It was <laughs> fun, though. Uh, you, you know, what a memory, man. Mm. Thank you for letting us use your place. My pleasure, <laughs> my man. Uh, so something you had touched on there as well. Oh goodness! Well, that wasn't good. Well, oh, was no, it's like a martini. Yeah, but, uh, it's okay. I'll pour you Just another. a minute. Just a minute. Long as it didn't get on the. Oh, it got on the key. Oh, oh no! Oh no! It's okay. No. Alcohol doesn't affect it like water does. Not at all. Not at all. Not <laughs> at all. He'll be good and new in a second. Hey, Kaz, oh. I see my my buddy Costello is here. Good to see you, John. John is uh, uh, our photographer. He's going to be at the theater tomorrow night taking photos. Hey, John. Nice. John. Oh, hey, John. You did a great job when we were there. We had the yeah. pleasure of performing at Smoke and Mirrors. What yeah. a great guy. Yeah, totally great guy. Great photographer. Mm-hmm. John. Uh, my question was going to be, before that little accident there, um, is uh, about your 
uh, convention then, Danny, uh, that uh, he had mentioned with LVMI. That ran for about three or four years, was it, or how no, long? LVMI was about six or seven years. The very first one happened three days after 9-11 um, was the very first one. And then eventually it was it was Magic Live that was just uh, killing us. But while LVMI was still going on, I came up with the idea to do a convention for mentalism. There was no open mentalism convention at that time. And even though LVMI ended uh, a number of years ago, we did, because of COVID, we did a virtual mindvention this year, which was uh, our 17th convention for, um, yeah. for mind readers. 17. But you also did Coinvention. That was Let's a one-off, one, one time. That was incredible. You no, know, that, was I, I, that was two years. That was two no, years. One year. No, two, because I got the video, man. I was there. Okay. Uh, we'll talk <laughs> about that later. But I, I know it was a one-time, one time. It was a double video, but it was a one-day event oh, because great. we had so many guys. It was actually Curtis Cam. There was a coin vent coin board and they were talking about that. And they said, we're thinking about doing a coin convention. And I said, you're going to lose your shirt. I said, but I have a close up convention. I think if we do a one day coin convention the day after some people would stay over. But the lineup of talent that we had at that coin convention was I, I looked at the DVD the other day. It was absolutely incredible. Everybody. Again, everybody was less back then. But everybody, the top coin guys, they were all there. That was an incredible event. Truly, truly incredible. Who were some of the people? I assume like David Roth and uh, Curtis Cam and Roth, Troy Hooser. All, all the heavy hitters. Jeff, Jeff Lotta had not yeah. been seen by anybody in, in a magic event in years. And I'll never forget the line he did. When he first came out to do his first thing, he was literally shaking like this. And I remember oh. his line. He says, is it an earthquake or is it just me? <laughs> uh, so Jeff Lada, Dean Dill, um, um, Homer Leeway, Chris Kenner came out and talked about the coins across um, Three Fly, what came to be known as Three Fly, Kanoa Harbottle, Curtis Cam, um, Garrett Thomas was there. It was everybody. You can't name them all. There are like 30 superstars on that DVD. And shameless plug, we still have some. <laughs> yeah, in VHS or DVD? That's what we do. Yeah, it's a DVD. Theater. But as, it, it is so rich with the best coin magic and the best coin workers in the world. But that's not why we're here. Right. David Neighbors was there. It was literally anybody that, that did some, some kind of coin work. Um, oh, my God. It was just it was an absolutely incredible, incredible couple. Well, it was uh, a superstar lineup. You couldn't have beat it. You couldn't. And I was amazed. I think if I recall about 140 some people stayed that extra day to experience Coinvention. So I thought maybe there would be 40, maybe 50 people, but it was really uh, that that was something special. So it's available from better magic dealers everywhere. Or right through Danny Archer. Not through me. <laughs> I don't have a website. I don't even sell my own stuff anymore. I, I honestly, I well, don't. That's because your stuff is really not worth selling. <laughs> I don't even give my stuff away anymore. Uh, I just been too, too busy with the theater. Stuff. Yeah, you find them, find all Danny's work through dealers and. No, oh, thank you, thank you. But so uh, old, a lot of people don't know about it, and it's probably new again. Someone, well, someone you, asked me, "What's it like owning a theater?" And I said, "You ever see a steam locomotive? That's what it's like. I'm shoveling. We're shoveling." <laughs> Morning. We're shoveling in the afternoon. We're sho it's a, it's a nonstop engine. It just has to be fed and I'm shoveling baby. So all my attention is here. I don't worry about my products or, 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 or too much other stuff. Same here. Mm. You, uh, talk about the, uh, the longevity of the mindvention that has been uh, going on. There really seemed to be an opening and a gap at the right time whenever you started with that. And, uh, I just think it's great to have a different guest of honor that you've had uh, over the past and different people who have, I mean, it's really blossomed and it, uh, 
what I think is interesting also, and I think I've shared this with you before, Danny, and all the conventions I attend and do the convention report, podcast reports, uh, the, I get more downloads from for the Mindvention than any other convention. I mean, FISM, IBM, any of the factors, anything else, people go back and they're really interested. And the thing is, we only have like, what, 120 people or so that show up at that, but I get thousands of people who want to download and listen to see what the heck we talked about. Yeah, it's um, you're right. The convention, it's always we knew it was going to be a niche convention. It was never going to be a magic live to topic, especially way back then, 17 years ago when it first started. But um, back then, there was no other. There was the PEA that you had to be a member of an exclusive organization. They had a convention. There was really nothing else. And that was a topic that mentalism wasn't as popular then as it was now. But I thought that it would be. And maybe uh, my invention helped it a little bit. But it was just um you know the right thing to come along at the right time but it's it's never the, the biggest year we ever had was maybe 160 it's usually 125 is is right around there and we don't care we we have a great time it's it's three great days in las vegas and uh i, I look forward to it sorry we couldn't do it live this year one of the things I think is kind of fun also about that other conventions might want to take note, and that is how you open the dealer's room to locals or whomever for free. In other words, you don't have to have a registration to attend the dealer's room because yeah. there are people locally who want to come in and buy something, and it's good for the dealers too. It's great for the dealers, and I never understood conventions that tried to keep people out of the dealer room. No, we were the opposite. There's 500 magicians that live in Las Vegas. Maybe one guy, Louis Simonoff, would register and come to my invention. But 400 of them would go through the dealer room, so maybe there's some extra business. So that was always our policy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, Carol, I was going to ask you then also, as far as working over there then with Joe and, and building the theater and everything, uh, when they were, uh, when I showed the video to begin with, of course, the two of you had been just uh, partners for such a very long time prior to opening the theater where you guys had worked together in uh, casinos and uh, cruise ships and all kinds of places all around uh, the planet. And then you decided to uh, to do this. Uh, is there a part of the theater that you take charge of? I mean, I always think of you as being an equal magician partner you're not an assistant and that's to be clear because you are a magician uh and so i first and foremost want to well i'm always perceived that way because i do happen to be quite female but um yeah at the theater, <laughs> at the theater we we have our roles i mean i am an organizer type of person i always have been and so i do take on the seating chart and the marketing, and I am a bit of the janitor, although I do share that with Joe. Um, it's just, you know, you do have to divide your roles. And Joe will get the guest artists in order. With our wizard camp, we're equal partners. We're definitely both teachers. I take the new students, the level one, and Joe gets the advanced students. So yeah, it, it's really important, especially with the two-person operation, that you have different roles because you know we all have our fortes and our weaknesses so that's how that has worked out but yeah um when it comes to the public shows like the show we're going to do tomorrow night we've got five magicians in the show i am the only female but i do have my solo pieces um which has taken me probably uh years to get to that but um it's very satisfying and i do try to represent the female contingent of this amazing art form. So there you go. Ah, uh, yay. <laughs> yep. Uh, very good. Well, uh, speaking, by the way, hi, of. By the way, hi, Carl Myers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, how Myers had. Uh, said hello that, uh, yeah, he said, uh, hello, Carol. <laughs> but he knew uh, known, Jeff I've Lauda. Known that I've known any of you guys. So. <laughs> yeah, some may remember him as uh, Damien uh, as yes, well. Damien. Mm -hmm. uh, Great show. Great guy. Uh, great lecture then, too. Uh, so I was going to ask you about the uh, Wizards Camp a little bit uh, of what you do during, during the, the, the summertime. And so, yeah. Hey, Carol. <laughs> so what do you do uh, during a summertime as far as how the Wizard Camp works and how you guys uh, coordinate that uh, as far as, you know, what's the age and how long does it last? And do you have one week or two for these kids and then another session or in different levels? How do you, how do you do that? Carol. You want to take it? Should I take it? You take it. Okay. Um, the funny thing is we ad advertised this at the beginning 18 years ago. 
saying ages seven to whatever. And it turns out we've had adults come to wizard camp. So now we say ages seven to 75. And we have definitely enjoyed having adults come. It's a four day camp, half days. Um, magic, we we emphasize with ordinary objects. So in any situation, they can be asked to do a trick and they can find rubber bands or you know, cloth napkins or straws or whatever. And so that's how the curriculum was designed. And then on the final day, the coolest part is today we had our recital. So on the fourth day, they get to do recital for family and friends. We had a packed house today. So that's how we have designed it. Um, and it's we do it only two times a summer. I used to try to organize it and go around people's schedule, which I started to realize is impossible. So the ones that can't do the wizard camp usually end up with private lessons. But yeah, it's really been fun to have the adults join in too. It's great. But, uh, I expected Carol to say something about our emphasis, which is not about methods. It's not about no, how not. Done. it's all about performance, speaking in front of an audience. She gets them up there the very first day. And these are, she takes level one, like she said. She gets the the people that are shy and afraid and gets them on stage day one after they learn a couple tricks. And she teaches them how to greet the audience, where to stand, how to treat your spectators, all this stuff. We also emphasize creativity in their presentations. So they come up with their own stories or whatever they do with the magic. And I have to say, I was amazed today. First trick they learn is the jumping rubber band. Yeah. <laughs> and this girl came up with this great story and presentation and she was doing double rubber bands and the fence across the fingers and all this stuff and she's talking about a kangaroo that would hop over and then a lion she would add that and the lion would chase the kangaroo and they're jumping all over she must have had 15 transitions of rubber bands going on <laughs> the crowd was going nuts she was charming and it was beautiful and it was original and it was great and she's how old uh seven Eight? Oh, man. Nine. Yeah. Oh, nine. she was nine. But she nine. nailed it. I mean, it was the best nine. jumping nine. rubber band thing I've ever seen in my life. And so what's really fun, though, after doing this for 18 years, where we've had wizard camp happening this long, is that um, we have parents that still contact us and say, that was such a special experience. You know, if their kid doesn't do magic right. anymore, they were taught how to get in front of a crowd and do things that made them comfortable. We have parents that comment on the kids that come in and they're warning us. They're saying, Oh, you know, that he's really shy. They probably don't, he won't get on stage. And if he does, and by the time the four days are over, the parents are freaked out. They're in tears. They're going, Oh my gosh, I can't believe you brought this out. And my kid, this is so great. You know? So it's, it's, very heartwarming, you know? Yeah, I had that happen today. I got an email within 30 minutes after the recital from a parent that said, wow, I cannot believe Ryan got up on stage, that he's very shy and a little bit of a slow learner, and it was a big deal that he will carry. Yeah. Well, there, there was a... There was a picture you had posted here on uh, Facebook. It looked like, was this the graduation class? Uh, that actually was a field trip. <laughs> that okay. was a field trip that all came in. And that happened to be on a day of wizard camp. But yes, that's a field trip that we brought in. But they actually couldn't come last summer because of COVID. So they rescheduled for mm -hmm. um, yesterday. Yeah, Just that's a big group. <laughs> yeah, it was a show. Only. A lot of fun. Yeah, we did a show for them. We actually taught them one trick at the end of the show, though. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny, do you do something during the summer also, uh, traditionally, or is yours just show and the magic shop and the close-up? Uh, or Yeah, we um, we do shows 52 weeks a year. Um, so we, we, we did a camp the first year, and while it was fun – uh, we decided not to offer it as a regular experience just because 
the um, you know when you have a theater like this, it starts to generate outside shows. So between the in theater shows, the outside shows, there's a couple of magicians that we keep busy. A friend of yours, Mike Miller's right behind the curtain. I saw Mike pop in. Maybe he left already. <laughs> um, hey, Mike. Mike has a a bunch hey, Mike. of props here. Mike's a friend of everybody around the world. Every magician oh, knows yeah. Mike. Everybody knows of course. Mike. <laughs> so, so happy. He's opening up for me uh, next week. So Mike performs here regularly. So what we found is that we are busy enough just trying to run the theater uh, that we just didn't have time to, uh, to do those type of events. Can I step in for a second? Yeah. Sorry, Scott, didn't want to cut you off, but we uh, operate on a little bit different schedule because Danny's got a lot of access to a lot of great talent on the East Coast. So he's able to keep these things going on a weekly basis, which I already applauded. I don't know if people saw that, but kudos to you, Danny, because that's amazing. Uh, we yeah. only do public shows once or twice a month because we rely on the, the talent of the professionals that we bring in and we brought them in from all over the world, but uh, we don't do a show unless it's going to be a world-class talent that's on stage. Um, present talent. Not <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke, but uh, the thing is, uh, you know, being in a small place without a major metropolis, right around us, it's hard. Uh, and there are not that many um, unbelievable magicians that reach the level of the talent that we bring in and in Colorado. So uh, we have to be very particular about who put on stage. We don't advertise, we don't print ads, we don't do anything like that. Our 18 year success has been due to word of mouth. And we get a ton of people that come back to every single show because they know if we're having a show, whether they've heard about the person or not, and most of the time they haven't, because frankly, there aren't that many big names in magic that a, a, the public will, will understand or, or recognize. Um, uh, they just know it's gonna be great. And so they've been supporting us for years that way. Yeah, most theaters, I believe, actually plan on uh, uh, audiences coming to see magic, not necessarily because you're going to see, I mean, in, in the common so the common person, they only know Chris Angel, David Blaine, maybe David Copperfield, if they know any one of those three that they can name. But for the most part, they can't name any magicians. So magic is usually featured at these uh, theaters. Yeah, well, that's well, what yeah. we found. I came up with the idea. I called it the hundred dollar challenge. I can walk up to any layman, say, here's a hundred dollar bill. You keep that. If you can name five living magicians, <laughs> Houdini's, dead. Houdini's dead. Don't name Houdini. They cannot, you're getting that hundred back. Believe me, you're getting yeah. that hundred back. It's the same thing. And I, I, I believe the same thing. We are extremely discriminating about the performers that we let perform here for the same reason that you are. We feel our reputation is on the stake with, with every show. And because we are in such a metro area, there's so many magicians nearby, we get two to three almost every week. I'm a magician, book me. Out of the, out of the unsolicited uh, submissions that we get, maybe one or two out of a hundred, uh, we, we end up booking. So right. yeah, we're we're pretty we're pretty fussy uh, about about who we bring in. Well, someone was just that asking, mean, Matt Stanley was all, just asking, who do you have coming up for your opening weekend? Uh, opening weekend mm -hmm. is um, Matt Stanley. You never heard of Matt? Really good comedy magician out of Ohio. <laughs> I'm I'm <laughs> doing. Yay, Ohio. I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> I'm the headliner next weekend. Then after that, we've got coming. And now I'm going to have to look. I, I don't have my, my schedule in front of me, but we have, I think, Randy Shine. We stick with, we stuck with some of the locals. Mike Miller uh, is, is going to do a spot. We stuck with some more of the local people because you know what? A lot of the, um, even though Matt's coming from Ohio, um, we have Peter Samuelson coming. Um, a lot of the touring performers are just not touring right now. We just booked Joan Decor from Las Vegas. So Joan will be here. Um, we had Carissa Hendricks coming back for her second time when COVID hit. We had, um, oh, his name, oh, um, Scott, is it McDonald? No, Stuart McDonald. 
Stuart McDonald. We had him booked. We had to cancel him because of COVID. So we would get, but just because you bring in big names, you know, the worst show we ever had was a big name. Should I name him? No. Sure. No. That's okay. Mean. I will. Don't do it. It was, it was Kreskin. Kreskin oh, was oh, five well, that's okay. <laughs> we give you a the worst show. We talked about that. The worst show we had was Kreskin. After the show, his manager calls me up. How was it? I said, okay. He said, you're going to have him back? I said, if he does the same show he did now, no. He talks 75%. He performs 25 If he flips those two, we'll have him back. He says, he's not changing the show. I said, we're not having him back. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We've had a couple bombs. Uh, I wouldn't call them bombs, but a couple performers that we were not happy with. They didn't live up to our standards and their names. Um but we've been very lucky to have virtually every act be great. Virtually every act in our 18 years has gotten standing ovations. And so that's, I have to say the biggest excitement for me, and I, I think I'm speaking for Carol too, is that, you know, we're both professional performers. We don't want to feature ourselves a bunch of times during the year. But we get such a thrill out of sharing this art form mm. to people when the people are the best in the world. And so to see that that is working uh, has kept us alive forever. But also, you know, it's kind of funny. We get these comments virtually every show where people walk out and say, that's the best show you've ever, ever had. And these are the people that have seen, you know, 25 shows over the years. So, you know, it keeps on rolling that way. And their memory is fresh at the moment and, you know, makes us proud. And we don't really watch the show. Uh, we're watching the audience and listening to the audience the whole time. And uh, that's what feeds us. That's what makes us know we're doing something special. Awesome. Yeah. I, I want to also. Well, and I, I must interject on Go ahead. No, go ahead. I just wanted to interject on that. Because we have um, nurtured our email list over the years, and like at Smoke and Mirrors, people may not know their, their names, but they know us as people. In fact, it's a little bit embarrassing because sometimes people will all check their name off the door and they'll hug us because they're our friends. They've become our friends. But they trust our opinion. They feel like if Carol and Joe think that, Peter Samuelson, we don't know his name. If they think he's good enough, we trust them. And then they're standing mm -hmm. ovations. And like Joe said on the way out, we love them. Can't wait till the next one. So that, that's a lot of it. They trust our judgment that we won't put them on our stage because we haven't let them down. So that's where it comes from. It's, a, it's mm. a lot of nurturing, but it works. That's something that just takes time also to develop that kind of reputation or <laughs> People okay. know quality, basically. I assume that both of yeah. you have pretty high TripAdvisor ratings, and that really means a lot. It does. It helps. I have to be honest. We haven't pursued the TripAdvisor thing too much and pushed it, and we should have been doing that years ago and said, hey, talk about us on TripAdvisor. We, we should have been doing that years ago because we would have had so many more ratings than we probably have. But we, what we do Rod, have are all five. Rodney Housley just spoke in. Hey. Thanks, Rod. Rod was there. Hmm? Yes, he was. Rodney Housley worked our theater. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so I also want to ask uh, Danny, because I, I think I want to mention everyone also, he's got a, another engagement and going to have to leave in about 10 minutes or so. He's got a hard out, but I did want to get around to you to talk a little bit about the virtual shows. I know some theaters, particularly Monday Night Magic, has been doing theirs virtually for quite some time. Uh, the Chicago Magic Lounge has been doing that. Chicago Magic Lounge is now back open, as I understand it then too, but they have been doing some virtual shows. Can you tell me a little bit about what plans you got there? 
we're going to do it a little bit differently. During the shutdown, we did a ton of virtual shows. I had one day, I did seven shows in one day during the December season. I slept here at the theater. It was just totally, totally crazy. But what we're doing is during uh, the, the pandemic, we installed um, three cameras. These are re re robotic cameras because the way our theater is built, most theaters, you could stand at the back and shoot over the back of the audience. The back of ours, the guy's feet is seven feet off the ground because well, it's like now's a good time for you to use your camera. Why don't you show us around a little bit here? The uh, I don't know if you can you see a little bit. I've got yeah. the, the stage lights on, but you can see that's that's the stage lights up there. But each row there's only four rows, and each row goes up. So every seat we we use the line. Every seat is the best seat in the house. There's exactly sixty seats. And this is our main theater. We have another on the other side of that wall behind that picture. There's another 60 seat black box theater that we use for banquets and uh, and things of that nature and, and food events and shows. And we've done like Jeff McBride when we had Jeff here. He said, I don't I want to do we did it. We did half the show here, half the show in the other theater. We'll never do that again. It was just moving people back. It was just <laughs> such a such a nightmare. But what we're doing what we're going to do that no one else is doing yet, because my, my partner and I were talking, he said someone's going to copy what we're doing. We're going to do what they call a hybrid show, meaning um, live audience. We're going to stream the show so you can watch it live. If you can't watch it live, it will be recorded. You can watch it as video on demand. The difference being when I, I don't watch a lot of magic on TV. Why? Because magic on TV sucks. And the reason why is right now, if I was doing a trick, you don't know. Is there someone right there off screen that's handing me something, telling me something? Did I have something palm that I now just drop because you can't see what the camera's showing? Our audience virtually watching at home, they won't worry that because at the beginning of the show, we're going to pan over and say, look, here's our live audience. You know, there is no camera tricks. There's cameras right there, but they're not trick cameras. So that's going to be what we feel is going to make the difference. This is not a Zoom show. It's not interactive. If you're watching on home at home, you will have no interaction. But it's the same thing like they did with Hamilton. You could either go to Broadway, try to get a ticket and see the show, or you could watch it from home virtually and get as close to an experience as possible. So that's what we're um, going to attempt to do is, um, you know, starting with this weekend, start to stream the shows and uh, and see what happens. How much yeah, will the tickets be for that. your live shows versus your versus the virtual shows? You would think I would know the answer to that. I'm not that's sure. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, I think the streaming ticket is like 20 bucks. And again, that's for a household. So that's, you know, you want to have, you know, mom and dad and the kids and grandma, that's as many people. Our, our prices here in the theater, our front two rows are 35, our back two rows are 25. So Danny, I have to say, yeah, you know, there's been a big discussion in the magic industry about how you're going to make uh, virtual stuff work and that people are saying, well, you know, it's just in its infancy and somebody's going to come along to make this more viable. And your solution, your idea about doing it virtually at the same time you can prove that the audience is there to show that you're not cheating is brilliant. I love it. I think it's great. So, so you've solved a little bit of a problem there where everybody else might go, okay, just like all the stuff you said. Good job. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. You know, it's going to be untested. How do you get the word out? We're, we're, we're playing with different ideas. But what I realized, we have a customer here at the theater. I'm looking at a seat. He sits in the front row right there. Frank is his name. Frank has been to the theater. Now, we were only open before COVID hit about two and a half years, 73 times. 73 wow. times. Wow. And what I realized is there's a Frank in Indianapolis. There's a Frank in Albuquerque. There could be a Frank that lives in Anchorage. There's other people that like magic the way Frank does that might not live. Now, Frank does not live uh, a mile away from the theater. Frank lives in Allentown, which is about a good 45 to an hour drive, depending upon traffic. But Frank will be here. We put up you know, seven shows recently, Frank bought front row seats for all those shows. So there's a Frank in uh, Springfield. There's a Frank in Concord. There's Franks all over. They don't have access to the Magic Theater. So hopefully we're going to let them know and we'll find our other Franks in, in, uh, in other cities. 
I just have to say that I think that, that particular great. Frank loves you, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, Frank loves what we do. <laughs> See you later, Mike. Thanks. Frank, Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, hey, Mike. Hey, hey, Mike. Man. That's Joe and Carol from Theater Day. Hi, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. How you How are you, Mike? Hey. Good to see you. Good to see you, Mike. Mm. Nice. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's Frank great. Brilliant saying. idea. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how it develops. Already, you know, we haven't been in here, you know, doing shows because um, we the virtual we did them really hard. And I'll be honest with you, to me, I paid to see a number of virtual shows. There was only one or two that I thought were a good or a little bit better than good. And some of them were big names that absolutely I thought were horrendous. And um, it's the nature of the medium. Magic is a live performing art. It yeah. has to be anything other than live. You're thinking a camera off screen, someone's helping, whatever. Because I remember one guy, I'm watching his show. His girlfriend is under the table writing stuff and passing them. It's like, because you, you could do anything. And guys have been pushing the boundary. But you know what? The audience is not stupid. The audience realizes, oh, no, the, I, I, if I was there live, could he do this? That's what, well, here, they're not going to have that wonder because they will know our one camera can spin around and show the audience. We have an overhead camera that if a guy's doing anything on the table, it could get to tabletop. Even though our theater, the way it's built, if you put a card down, we had Jason Ladani here. Great act if you ever have a chance to see him. Oh, yeah. But he's a card guy. He sits at the table, gets two people up, and does his entire show like that. And the first time he played here, he said, I got to go out to my car and get my projector. I said, projector? He says, oh, I have a projector and a screen and a camera because if they can't see what I'm doing, the show doesn't work. I said, look at the theater. No, I always need it. I said, just come in and look at the theater first. He came in. He went to the back row. He said, put a card in the table, four of spades, three of hearts. He said, you can see the cards. He left his projector in, in the thing. He's, he, wow. he, he doesn't even bring it now. So um, magic is a live performing art. Anything other than that, and um, it's something like magic, but it ain't magic, in my opinion. Yeah. I second that. Carol, go ahead. No, I second that. I agree with you all the way. I, I have never really been into the Zoom thing because you do need to be able to touch – the card or at least feel someone's energy i i we've done a few but not my favorite thing right, at least be able to see the entire performer's body you know because i know some of these shows i've watched them and i said like the one guy has the incredible thought of card to glass have you seen that i forget the guy's name right now he's from um adrian lacroix adrian lacroix absolutely incredible trick he's amazing but, you can't do that live. <laughs> Does that mean it's not magic? I don't know. I mean, you know, we could debate that till the cows come home, but no one here, when they leave, they don't think, oh my God, you did, the people were, no, they realize you watched a man or woman and their skills that they have developed and that that's what they're watching. Yeah. 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 Now, when is the, I, I know you got to leave here just in like about, 60 seconds here real quickly uh you said the mind invention will not take place live this year but it will be a virtual show is that correct no Convention. we did a virtual one in january i'm playing around with the idea to do a little something later in the year um uh we have a website mindvention is it dot com or dot net i don't even remember anymore <laughs> but uh, but if you Google my invention, it will it will come up. We also have a Facebook page, like our Facebook page, and you can find out about it. Uh, but um, it's funny because I really debated about it, and after I decided not to do the in person thing, a number of uh, guys that are our regulars contacted me and said you did the right thing. We really want to go, but it's too soon right now. So hopefully next year will be, uh, will be better for all this stuff. We, right now we know that we're open to Mars, our first show. We know that it's too soon for some people to come back. Um, that's okay. We had to start sometime. So we're starting back and hopefully our audience, when they feel confident, uh, will return. Let me throw this out because tomorrow night is our first public show. We've had a few shows over the last year that were fundraisers or limited audience when we are allowed. And my, my thinking is that if people are uncomfortable, they're not going to buy a ticket. 
Exactly. So, so I think you're okay. If you put it out there, like tomorrow night's show is going to be sold out. Those 50 people, because we're still working at a lower capacity, are comfortable and they're going to show up. And those that aren't will wait. Exactly. The funny thing, I'm sitting right here in this spot. I had a heart attack. I'm looking out at the audience right there on this stage, <laughs> December 12th. That I had to stop the show. I mean, I could not continue the show. And the people did not realize that this was going on. They thought this is part of the act. <laughs> we'll save that for another podcast. It's too wow. long you, were having a, you were seriously having a heart attack. Yeah. It wasn't just like a joke. I'm having a heart attack. You know, you really. Well, I didn't say oh, no. that because I he wasn't really sure did. I was having a but yeah, I knew I knew I had to get off the stage. I just said, folks, I'm not feeling well. I said, Marty, take over. And he's like, what? What do you mean take over? And he ran down and told a joke. And then he let me go check on him. And it was just an unbelievable night. And it was a hybrid show. We had it was a bar mitzvah. We had live people here in the audience. And we were streaming it to the rest of the bar mitzvah people that weren't able to come. So it was uh, and then as the ambulance is taking me away, the, the mother of the bar mitzvah kid gets a phone call that her mom just died. So they will never forget oh. that bar mitzvah. I'll, I'll tell you that. Oh, I'll my tell you gosh. That. Wow. Hey, oh. guys, I've got to run. I'm doing a thing for the mystery school. They're doing a, um, a session. Ricardo Rosencrantz is doing a session about one man shows. And one of the segments they wanted to do, they wanted to talk to a theater owner about if you have a one man show, how do you get your show into a theater? So I'm going to go and talk to that group. But uh, I love everybody. Good seeing everybody. And uh, I'll see, see you, you down bro. the road. Look for us online, smokeandmirrorstheater.com. Ciao. That's it. Dan. Thanks a lot, Danny. Appreciate you All being right. here. Stay All well, right. as they bye say. Bye. Get bye some bye. more hippos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another uh, person who is starting a, a show here then this evening is uh, uh, Ray Anderson. Is uh, going uh, back uh, as well with his show, which is Esther's Follies. So you guys, have you seen Esther's Follies? Carol's not that familiar with it. I just saw some stuff recently about it. I've heard about it for years, and it blows my mind. What a cool concept. It is a great concept, and it is – <laughs> I, I don't know how much longer it's going to be going because the owners of the uh, thing who've been the ramrods for the last 40 years, I guess, of – they're getting older, like in their 70s or something. It's kind of like, you know, I think we need to get rid of this. And they're not going to sell it to someone else to keep the tradition going. As I understand it, they are saying they don't think someone can do it the way they were doing it. So they are saying that, uh, yeah, uh, as, as Rod says, yeah, the best, uh, Ray is amazing. He's my favorite magician. I tell you, Ray Anderson doesn't need to go out of town. He's doing very well in, in Austin. And anyhow, tonight is, uh, is the reopening. I was talking to Fielding West yesterday and Fielding was saying he was flying into, uh, Austin in order to see the show. He flew in yesterday in order to see the show tonight. I know Mark and Sue Holstein, who are usually here also are not because they're at the show uh, then as well. So, uh, and I don't know, maybe Nick uh, Lewin is not here tonight either, which he usually is, and uh, he and Susan, and they may be even going to the show. Uh, so it should be a, a great grand opening for however long this is going to be running for it's, again, for a long time, but at some point, it's uh, the writing is on the wall. It's slowly being written, I should say. You know, That's too bad because I really want to see that show. Can Better hurry. Come on, down. Come on down. Come on down. The weather's we got to make a special trip to Austin just to see the show. And if they can't keep it there, they got to find another venue because that is a special thing. It really is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you need to uh, come on down. As I said, uh, Fielding was making a special trip from Vegas just to see the show. So um, now can we talking stay at your about house? how's that? Can we stay at your house? Well, of course <laughs> you can. Yeah, and I'll drive up to Austin with you to see the show. I mean, I, I think when people come we'll to visit me. I do. So I drive them up to Austin to see there. I think it's 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 worth the drive. I mean, it's four hours away, but I'll do it. It's just an amazing show. As long as you're driving. Right. I'll drive and drink and we'll have a good time. <laughs> well, I'll do half of that. Okay. Um, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> I'll do them together. 
<laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's true. So how do you go about selecting the acts for your show? Because as you said, you're kind of landlocked in the middle of the country there where you have a limited amount of talent within, uh, you know, 500 miles or so. So is it like people who are just passing through? They tell you in advance, hey, we've got a show. We're going to be doing a trade show or something. Or do they make a special trip just to do the show? Or do you reach out to them and book them and pay for their flights and everything? Or how, how exactly do you do this? Can I take this, Carol? Yeah, sure. We've had a little of both, actually. So go ahead and take it, Joe. A little of both. All some right. on the crew and some that this is we've the destination. Been, uh, you know, we've been, we've been connected with the best magicians in the world for a long time uh, due to the career that we were having at the time. Uh, winning the awards, Carol writing for Genie Magazine on a monthly column as a cruise director and a cruise ship performer was awesome. So we had credibility. And so we were pulling teeth to get really good performers in the place uh, in the beginning. Uh, it evolved through word of mouth through the magic industry because we treat them like gold when they're here. And they don't make a lot of money because we have a limited house. We seat like 75 people. But we know magic. And we know what every performer needs to make themselves look the best they can. And so we're able to do that. And so it developed into a thing where the performers, big names, would start spreading the word saying, oh, my gosh, you got to go do this thing in Colorado. You got to do the theater of dreams because it's a great time. And, and the audiences are stellar. They love it. And so they get great response no matter what. We provide them with video. So if they can ever use it, they've got it. But I think the experience has been what's made it work. And so for the last seven years, maybe, maybe even more, we haven't had to actually solicit talent. We've had big names calling us saying, when can we come? When can we do this thing? We hear it's great. We got to do it. And, you know, if you go to the website, amazingshows.com, Carol put together a list of uh, the archives of all the people we've had. And uh, it's a who's who of magic. It's we've been so honored and so thrilled to be supported by these people. So it, we don't have to we don't have to find talent. They find you, basically. Yeah, they do. And, and you know, honestly, in Colorado, and I don't want to make other people mad if they're watching and they live here, but we have to be very selective about the talent that we feature on stage. And there are just a handful of people that rise to the level of that status where they can, uh, you know, they can't just do great tricks. They've got to be great entertainers. They've got to have a personality. They've got to have a character. They've got to have it all uh, because they got to live up to the, expectations of the audience who have seen these world-class people. And so we have a handful of those people that we love to perform with. And like, that's the show tomorrow night. We've got three of the best magicians in the entire state supporting Carol and I, and they kind of outshine us, I think. And uh, I assume you have some people who come back on a regular basis, much like what Danny was talking about, Frank coming to like 73 shows or something. You probably have a lot of repeat customers. Tons of them. Oh yeah. We have Carol, a lot of friends. Very... Yeah. Carol, now, yeah. Oh, well, I already touched on that before. I did oh, touch yeah. on that before. That people yeah. have become our friends. Every single show, just because We're they know. Be there was one other thing uh, before we close over here, and that is the festival that they have in Castle Rock. Can you tell me a little bit about the Magic Festival and how that developed? It was the pirate festival and how you'd kind of had them change their thought and thinking, mm -hmm. Hey, that magic actually sells. And then that took off. Carol, you take that on. Well, yeah, unfortunately COVID killed the magic fest. Oh man. So right I'm now, sorry. yeah, it did. And it, it was a thrill for us because we built it up. We had guest performers we had Jeff McBride. We had David M. Lehman at the very first. We had, um, Joe, help me, uh, Canada, 
uh, Sean Barquar. Barquar. Yeah, so it was great, That's and it. we organized it. It was basically Joe and I and Sean Preston put it together, and then this year, because of COVID, uh, they had all the other festivals, and we were the one that went by the wayside. Hmm. But anyway, we, uh, we are considering now Castle Rock has grown. When we came here 18 years ago, it had about 8,000 people. And now it's 65 to 70,000 people. And there are hotels wow. and there are best, there are parks and outdoor amphitheater where we actually could take all the things we learned in North Flint and have them in our town. And um, the man that ran the whole thing and convinced his city council to make Magic Fest to go said, here, here's the open book, take everything that you, that you have worked on and we have put together and you can have it. And before I sign off, I have to say hi to Paul Gertner over there. He performed oh, at, our magic, at our Theater of Dreams and he was on the list to do the next Magic Fest. He's been there so, three times. Three yeah. times I know. Hey, Paul. Really hard. You guys. <laughs> so let me just anyway, quickly we will, I'll tell you. We'll resurrect it if we can. We yeah. will. Um, the way this Magic Fest kind of came about is that Stephen is the guy's name. He worked for the city of North Glen, which is on the north side of Denver. It's a suburb. And I got word that they were trying to do Magic Festival. And I got in their face right away and said, look, we've had this magic theater for years. We know the best talent in the state. We know the best talent to bring in as far as headliners go. Uh, talk to us. And they reached out right away. So uh, we worked with Sean and, and developed this whole format. So it's free to the public, except for the public show, uh, except for the main show in the theater where they pay 10 bucks to see Jeff McBride. <laughs> you know, and all these other headliners. And uh, it killed for the four years that it worked. Um, so that was neat because it showed people that the magic is a viable thing. We had different tents all over the park so they could go see kid shows. They could see a mentalism tent. They could see uh, close-up magic. They could see stand-up comedy magic. Uh, they could see stage magic. And that was all free. And we rotated 30 plus magicians through those things got the best that we could get and uh, huge success. It was awesome. Yeah. I wanted to talk about that a little bit just because I know there are other cities perhaps who may want to replicate that in some form or fashion as we come out of quarantine and get back to uh, uh, doing these live shows then again. And next year, perhaps uh, uh, some festivals might start to come back. And that's one, I think, if some things have been killed and we're actually resurrecting some things, that might be a good one to, to kind of uh, uh, bringing up uh, then again, hopefully, uh, not only in your area, but other, uh, other areas as well. And I remember you were saying, I said something about the Pirate Festival. That was something that they had done and they weren't too sure that magic was going to work and then you tried it a year and they said oh we had an equal amount of attendance as we did last year at their best year and then it just grew from there so you just need to get someone who kind of on the council who buys into your your philosophy well the, the yes. they changed the mayor of the town uh and so the mayor didn't like the fact that it wasn't their idea i'm guessing and so they kiboshed it which is too bad because it built every single year for four years. Last year, we were able to pull it off during quarantine. We had to do some weird stuff and uh, have no ticketed people, show. you know, uh, only 30 per show and so forth, but they pulled it off. Um, it but it was really, it was really in a ramp to be a really cool thing. And, you know, after three years of spectacular success, um, it's too bad that COVID hit because it was going to be even a bigger success. Our, our headliner for last year was Kevin James. Wow. Yeah. He was going to bring in seven people and do the whole, the whole thing. thing. But then because they had the to limit everything, thing. they killed off the main theater and said, nope, they're not going to allow people to sit in a theater. So we can't use it. So we didn't, we weren't able to do it. 
So, you know, hopefully you can transfer yeah, that I mean, uh, formula to Castle Rock or somewhere else because it works. It's beautiful and it's polished and it's done and it's a great thing. It is. It's a formula right. that should be replicated in cities. It really should. It just takes the government to decide to get behind it and take that leap of faith. But they've seen it work, so it should get out there. Well, because television it on the has funding, it depends. I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, but it depends on funding. So, you know, they had to, uh, it is they, this particular uh, uh, suburb, suburb, you know, had X amount of dollars to spend on public events. And so they allocated that certain amount of money to make this event happen. Um, yeah. COVID hit, budgets were cut, different things happened. But if there are other towns or cities out there that want to do something like this, um, we got the formula and I'm not pitching that. I'm just saying, you know, maybe there are other ways. To it. All, all it can do is help build magic as a viable form of entertainment in an art form and, and uh, bring it to the public, especially if it's a freebie thing. Cause a lot of people think, Oh, it's all about the kids. And then they show up and they see great sleight of hand and mind reading and all this stuff. And they're like, whoa, I love this, you know? Right. It's for adults as well. Well, what makes me think, uh, it reminds me uh, back when uh, Luis D'Amato's had his uh, uh, magic uh, convention. It was uh, out of uh, Portugal or Spain. I'd forgotten what it was called. But anyhow, they had like 30 guys in the room, and I was somebody from Germany or someplace talking about uh, magic festivals, and they were talking about how popular they are in Europe, in, uh, Europe. In, in different cities. But it just doesn't translate over here, and it seems like the Mac King and uh, Lance Burton tried something in Louisville, and they took a bath in that, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure. They maybe did okay, but, I mean, I I, I know it was difficult to try to to sell that to to a government, uh, to the local to the town, and to get them to buy into it. But you have to... But I think that magic is a popular thing, as television has proven with uh, Masters of Illusion, with uh, uh, you, everyone uh, on America's Got Talent, had several magicians who have won and some who have uh, come out, which, by the way, uh, did you watch, see America's Got Talent recently with the uh, the guy who was dragging the axe and, you know, having it look like the Invisible yeah. Man with the mask? That was that? Was, that was What's that? Good. Yeah. You know who that was? <laughs> yeah. Who was it? Shall I tell you? I, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, this, is, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is kind of an inside thing, but since there are only just a few of us watching this and right now, I'll tell you, that was David Stone. <laughs> oh, go David, man. That's, That's right. That's great. <laughs> There's an inside secret that you got right there. He'd sent me a text on that and said, hey, that was me. And he, was, he sent me a video before it came out. And uh, show me about uh, you know the uh, uh, that how he was moving forward and everything. So yeah, kind of cool. I, so uh, you know, he said, "Here I, I have been trying to be famous all my life using my own character, and I I you know take on the Invisible Man basically, and as some sinister guy, and all of a sudden you know I'm I'm they like me." <laughs> well, it was great because I'm watching that and I'm going, I know I have to know who that is. Sure, you know, it's not some guy making this up, right. following the great Brianna because it's dark, it's gotta be somebody that's a pro. And and to hear it's him, ah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so there's a secret. So if magicians can see, keep that secret, don't tell other people if you're watching David this. Stone okay. is on the cover of the Magic Magazine that featured our theater in a four page that's spread. Right. Four -page spread. What did? That's right. Uh, uh, David Magic Stone Magazine. was on the cover of that issue a couple years hmm. ago. So yeah. it's really funny because I see him every day on the cover of the magazine in a basket <laughs> in the bathroom <laughs> you know reading material <laughs> not for me but for people who might show up carol's got it uh paper clipped so if they decide they need to have something to do they open it up and see an article about us but he's on the cover of that he looks a little different with the uh bandages over his face a little bit 
a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, guys, I'm so glad that you uh, joined us here this evening. It's been a lot of fun. This was our 52nd week of doing this or 52nd episode, not the 52nd oh, wow. week. We, we had taken off during Christmas and New Year's, and then I had a show last Thursday, so we were off, and, and I think it may have been maybe another time perhaps. But as we kind of slowly uh, get back into doing the real world and we have conventions and everything, I'm going to go back. I've got five conventions planned between now and the end of the year. I physically will be attending and be posting some some podcast uh, reviews and uh, updates, not reviews, but basically just some um, reports from the convention. And I want to remind everybody, by the way, that today's uh, podcast that went out was uh, with Martin Cox and with Paul Megram and Dave Allen uh, from the UK. And these guys are family and uh, children's show entertainers. And they were my guests here this week. So I encourage you to go to the magic word podcast.com or wherever you listen to your podcast, just download that. And if you were a kid show magician, I think that you would really enjoy, um, uh, hearing what they had to, uh, have to, what they had to say. And so that's, uh, av available over there. So if you would, please just go over and, uh, listen to the podcast and let's see. Uh, thank you, Harriet. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate, uh, you guys uh, being here. And also I thank Joe given. Thank you, Carol Massey given also for Danny Archer for being with us. And, uh, also for, <laughs> for the people who are my uh, financial supporters who have helped provide this great backdrop that we've got then right now and other kinds of things. Steve Mills, uh, as you say, you're always here also. I'm glad that you were here uh, as well. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, that's right. They, uh, yeah, you guys were great at the TAOM. Uh, you I had a great... <laughs> How do I point to her? It's all backwards. <laughs> she's, she's I'll, do that. I'll do that and then I'm going to get it one way or another. That's, that's right. Yeah. And uh, Paul, you're welcome. Uh, I'm glad that we could uh, get uh, to see everybody here. Thank you, as Paul. Well. Thank you very much. Good you friend. and Phil. Have a great great friend. seeing everybody. And so <laughs> until next week, we have uh, another great lineup next week. So hang around and watch the outro here of this. And let me just tell uh, you, Joe and Carol, if you'll hang around for just a couple minutes after the show is over, when I take you out, uh, if you want to hang on, we'll just, uh, I'll give you a proper thank you then again. So I'm going to take you guys out for a minute and thank everyone else for, for coming in. I appreciate you guys uh, uh, being here. And let's see if we got the, nah, here we go. Uh, so again, uh, thanks for watching. Also, I want to recommend if you get an opportunity to go over to the Magic Word uh, podcast, or I should say to YouTube, please subscribe to our channel, Texas Magician, and you can see it uh, there then too. And so until next week, uh, this is Scotty out.